Hello everyone. In this video, we will analyze four ideal basic circuit elements in terms of the voltage rise and drop between the terminals, the direction of the positive or negative charge, and the power associated with the circuit element. Recall that an ideal basic circuit element is described solely in terms of the relationship between its voltage and current. An ideal basic circuit element cannot be subdivided into simpler elements and it has two terminals to connect it to other circuit elements. First consider ideal basic circuit element A. Recall that I denotes the conventional current direction. In this case, I has a positive value of plus 2 amps. Thus, the given conventional current direction is the direction of the positive charge. We can see that the positive charge is flowing from terminal 1 to 2 in this direction. Thus, we can record the result as shown. The direction of the electronic current is opposite to the flow of the conventional current. Thus, electronic current is flowing in this direction. We can see that the negative charge is flowing from terminal 2 to terminal 1. Next, let's take a look at the voltage. Recall that the voltage V denotes the voltage at the terminal marked plus with relative to the terminal marked minus. In this case, for circuit element A, terminal 1 is marked plus and terminal 2 is marked minus. Thus, the voltage V is given by V1 minus V2 and for the given circuit element, it has a value minus 3. We can rearrange this equation to move minus 3 to this side and V2 to this side. So we get V1 plus 3 is equal to V2. And this equation shows that V2 is actually greater than V1. The voltage at terminal 2 is greater than the voltage at terminal 1. Thus, going from terminal 1 to 2, we have a voltage rise. And conversely, going from terminal 2 to 1, we have a voltage drop. Finally, we can apply the passive sign convention to this ideal basic circuit element A. We can see that the conventional current is entering the terminal marked plus. Hence, following passive sign convention, we write the power formula with a plus sign. We write it as plus Vi and then we just substitute the values. So this gives minus 3 times 2 which is minus 6 watt. We can see that the final answer is a negative number and following the passive sign convention this means that element A is supplying 6 watts of power. Next, let's look at ideal basic circuit element B as shown. For this circuit element, the current value and direction is actually the same as that for ideal basic circuit element A. Thus, the positive and negative charge flow directions are shown here and these are the same as before. For this circuit element, the voltage polarity and the value are actually reversed compared to ideal basic circuit element A. Let's analyze the voltage. For this circuit element B, we can see that the terminal marked 2 is positive and the terminal marked 1 is negative. Thus, the voltage V is given by V2 minus V1 and this has a value of 3 volts. 
Rearranging this equation, we get v2 is equal to v1 plus 3. And this implies that v2 is greater than v1. Thus, we can see that for this given basic ideal basic circuit element, when we go from terminal 1 to 2, there is a voltage rise. And when we go from 2 to 1, there is a voltage drop. Applying passive sign convention to this ideal basic circuit element, we can see that here the conventional current I is entering the terminal marked minus. Thus, we write the power formula with a minus sign. We use minus VI. Next, substitute values. We get minus 3 times 2 is equal to minus 6 watts. Since the final answer is negative, the element is supplying power. Here we are looking at ideal basic circuit element C. For this circuit element, the voltage polarity and the voltage value is actually the same as for circuit element A. Thus, the voltage rise and drop relationships are the same as for element A and shown here. We can see that the current direction and value are both reversed. When the conventional current has a negative value, we need to convert it to a positive value first. A conventional current of minus 2 A amps flowing from left to right is equivalent to a conventional current of 2 amperes flowing from left, flowing from right to left as shown. Now we can decide the direction of the positive charge flow. We can see that the positive charge is flowing from terminal 1 to 2. The direction of the electronic current is opposite. We can see that the electronic current is flowing from terminal 2 to terminal 1. We can see that in this case, the conventional current is entering the terminal marked minus. Thus, using passive sign convention, the, we use the power formula with a negative sign. And then we just substitute values. So we get minus 3 times minus 2. And this is minus 6 watts. Since the final answer is negative, element C is also supplying 6 watts of power. Finally, let's look at circuit element D. For this circuit element, both the current value and direction and the voltage value and voltage polarity are reversed compared to circuit element A. Using similar procedure as before, we can establish the results for the current, the voltage, and the power. And these results are shown here. We can see that circuit element D is also supplying 6 watts of power. Please pause the video now if you wish to study this analysis in more detail. In summary, comparing the results for the four ideal basic circuit elements A, B, C, D shown here, we can see that they are all equivalent. Equivalent means that their electrical behavior in terms of the flow of positive and negative charge, the voltage rise and drop relationships, and the power is exactly the same for all four of them.
I hope this video is helpful to you in terms of analyzing ideal basic circuit elements. Thank you for watching.